ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another sports battlefield, another inaugural match. We have we have Michael Campbell stepping in from we've seen him in Warzone. Now he's stepping into sports, and of course, Lucas Schobach, which we've seen in fandom. Now he tries his hand in sports. It's going to be interesting to see how these two do. But I'm not alone tonight. As always, I have the. I guess you could say the herpes to my gonorrhea. He is Dan Skip Allen. How you doing, Dan? Oh, God, man. <laughs> Boy, what a freaking introduction that was. Jesus. Uh, I'm doing all right until I got that introduction. Jesus, Tim. But, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always, I'm always looking forward to a sports battlefield because you just don't know what these competitors have. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, the knowledge uh, our two competitors have tonight. Oh yeah, and I mean, I mean, like you said, it's it gives us a gauge to see how well they'll do, to see how well they'll move on, because this will be the first of many matches for them for this season. The way this season's going down, which is is pretty exciting, but I think with that out of the way, let's hear what our competitors have to say. So here I am, my first match in sports battleground. I'm honestly somewhat terrified. Uh, this is a really weird situation for me to be in because I have absolutely no reputation in this sort of trivia to uphold. So I really can just kind of do my thing, enjoy myself, and uh, see what happens. I'm playing a guy who, for some weird reason, this league likes to schedule me against people I know really, really well. I think that's just because they hate me. Um, he's a really great dude. I honestly don't know how much he knows about sports. I know we've talked a couple. He definitely knows more about basketball than I do. This match can be really interesting or it could be uh, really bad so let's hope for the first one to happen and not the second uh, I'm just gonna enjoy my time has gone uh, you're probably wondering uh, am I worried to face Lucas now he's American you know they have the big four sports but here's the thing I'm about I'm as bad as worried as the Giants facing the Patriots in the Super Bowl for the third time I'm about as worried as LeBron <laughs> facing a Brad Stevens coach team in the playoffs and I'm as bad as worried as a white Red Sox fan walking into Fenway Park. Okay. The, the thing is, I could lose today, but in a week from now, I could actually win because of where Lucas is from and who he supports. There could be an investigation launched. That, that's actually a possibility. I enjoy saying that, but that's a possibility based on who Lucas supports. Okay. So suffice to say, I'm not really worried. Dan, both of these guys seem like they're raring to go. Lucas thinks, you know, the world's out to get him. Con conspiracy galore, rescheduling him against someone he knows very well. But if he would have just replied a little bit sooner or later, he would have had a different opponent. But, Dan, I think with that, like, I don't think I'm too worried about Michael anymore. I really don't. What about you? <laughs> he seems to uh, know his way around the Boston sports rivalries uh, quite well, so maybe that will help him um, navigate his way through the uh, answers of these questions. Um, but it kind of, you know, I don't like to root for anybody, but now I'm kind of rooting for uh, Lucas a little bit after that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of throwing my hat in the in the Michael ring there because after that I was like. I think he might be okay, but enough of that. Let's go to our proper introductions. Introducing first, making their sports battleground debut with a record zero wins, zero defeats. One half of the silver shamrocks over in fandom. He is Lucas Schilbach. I always have to push that last name because goddamn no one over here gets it fucking right. And his opponent also making his sports battleground debut with a record of zero wins, zero defeats. One half of big pitcher over in worldwide movie games, holding those titles probably for the end of time. He is Michael Campbell. All right, with that, they both seem like they're ready to go. So we will go over the rules for round one. Round one goes as such. It is eight simple questions from eight predetermined categories worth one point apiece. Each competitor will have 15 seconds to write their answer on their whiteboard. 
pen and paper, as long as you got something to write on. Hell, you could. We've even seen one half of Pat out of Hell use a fucking docket on a cell phone to write down his answers, which I didn't know you could do that, but apparently you can. So, as long as you have something to write with, when time is up, you will be called upon to show your answer as well as verbalize it. As long as the spelling's close, verbalization is the key. So, with that out of the way, gentlemen, are you ready? Let's go. Ahead. Let's do this. All right. Both of them are ready. Dan, would you like to kick us off with question number one? All right, guys, in the category of Major League Baseball, MLB, the first question is this. Stan Musial played for the St. Louis Cardinals in the 1950s. What was his nickname? So you, uh, what was the name? What you say? Like, just the name? Okay. What was his nickname? Yeah. No, like, which player did you say? Sorry. Stan Musial. Stan Musial. Okay. Yeah. So what's uh, uh, Tim? What's your ba- what's your favorite baseball team? We never got into this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we never got into this because it would probably be a fight. Um, because I just get bored with baseball. Oh, so, wow. Not yeah. a baseball team, huh? Yeah, I'm I'm more of a football NFL. I like a good fight with UFC and boxing, but uh. Guys knocking around the ball. Yeah. Not your thing. All right. Yeah. So um, that was the countdown. Michael, what do you got? Uh, no. Alice, uh, sticky, Stan Usual. That is. Sticky? Is that what it says? <laughs> sticky? Yeah. All right. yeah. um, Lucas? It's every iteration. Stan the Man Usual? Lucas, you got it right. Michael, you didn't get it right. Lord. It's that fucking obvious. Yep. Wow, I thought it literally wasn't. <laughs> and the man usual. That's his nickname. He had some boring nicknames back then. All right, Everybody. gentlemen, your second question comes in the realm of the NFL. What we were just talking about. So, brownie points if you know this one. How many Super Bowl championships does San Francisco hold? The good old San Francisco 49ers. You don't have to cheat like somebody's Patriots around here. Ugh. Oh, God. Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I'll Five. tell you. Oh, go ahead, Dan. It seems like just yesterday that San Francisco was in their heyday, but it's 30 years ago that they won all these Super Bowls. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were and that is hands down. We will go to Lucas first. Is it four? Oh, you are so close, sir. Michael, were you able to get it? Don't forget the Steve Young one, five. Nice. Yes, Michael does get that to tie us back up. I got stuck because I kept thinking that this, I kept thinking number five was the Kaepernick Super Bowl, and I was like, no, but they didn't win that. Uh, so I talked myself yeah. out of five. Well, the Brooklyn Vale curse always ugs its, or shows its ugly head around here all the time, so it happens. But Dan, go ahead and take us into question number three. Question number three is in the category of auto racing, and this could be any kind of racing. Uh, well, and, popular racing. Yeah, but this is – I'm kind of – this is kind oh, of – this question is a funny question because it's, it's a long story, but this is a funny question. Dale Earnhardt was known as what? What is his nickname? Dale Earnhardt. Uh, See, I, I knew you would get a kick out of this, Dan, after our last uh, sports battlefield. Dale Earnhardt has not been done kicking his head up in these questions. Yeah, some some competitor. Uh, I wish you'd never hear the word Dale Earnhardt ever again. Uh, <laughs> so, um, not the dude. <laughs> all right, Michael, what do you got? Oh. Michael, bend down. Uh, I just put Daredevil. Daredevil? Yeah, okay. uh, Lucas? I went, is it C- do they know him as Senior? No. No, no it's no. not that obvious, Lucas. You got you got the man, but you didn't get Senior. Uh, it's I've never the watched The Intimidator. The yes. Intimidator. All right. All right. Oh. Yeah, he, w- he, was, uh, he was a very intimidating factor on that course, but... Now let's go into 
Canadians' favorite pastime, the NHL. What was the name of the team in Minnesota that played in the NHL from 1967 to 1993 before moving to Dallas? Now, I think you're you're a hockey fan, right? Is this not one of your favorites, Tim? I'm getting into hockey. I don't have a team, but I kind of like it more for the fast play, and I love to see the fights. I love to see the fights, especially when you get Pittsburgh and Philly together. <laughs> oh, those are some good fights. Oh, yeah. So we'll go five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Let's go to Lucas first. I don't watch hockey, so I wrote wild. Wild. That is incorrect, unfortunately. And Michael. I just went with the Dallas. I just said stars. How can they say? Ah! Oh, if you would have put North in front of that, you would have had it, sir. Uh, they were the Minnesota North Stars before they moved to Dallas. Yes. Very close there, Michael. Very close. So there. close. So close. Um. All right. In the category. In your next category, maybe Michael will do better at this question. In the category of the. National Basketball Association, the NBA. Another cut, cut and dry question. You just got to know your uh, geography here. Uh, what country is Dirk Nowitzki from? <laughs> Great uh, Mavericks uh, players. You can ask uh, Mark Cuban. They'll gladly tell you. <laughs> Mark Cuban. I'll tell you what. That he is definitely an interesting character, but I think the NBA needs more guys like him in it. What, like owners like Cuban? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Four, three, two, one. Hands down. Let's go to Michael first. Uh, Jeremy. That is correct. And Lucas. Jeremy. Nice. Both of them sweeping that question what we love to see. All right, gentlemen, like I said, I love a good fight. Our next category is in a realm of UFC. With the exception of a few fights, Forrest Griffin has primarily known for fighting in what color trunks? Wow. So what color? Yes, what color trunks? I'll tell you what, I, would, I couldn't get this if you paid me a million dollars to get this. There's no way I would have gotten this question. This is I I guessed his the few fights where he wore a few different colors other than his regular ones, and I was just punching myself in the fucking face for it. <laughs> but I, I'm a boxing guy. I'm not <laughs> an MMA guy. We'll go five, four, three, two, one. A sport where you can't kick somebody in the head. What the fuck kind of sport is that now? Come on, man. With that, pens down. Let's go to Michael first. Uh, I, red. That is incorrect, unfortunately. And Lucas. I don't know why this came to my mind, but I said pink. In one fight, I think he did wear pink, but primarily he wore brown trunks. Brown trunks. Um, Thank you, Nico. Cool. I wanted a good question for round one, but I got stuck with that. Fucking Nico. <laughs> I, know. I know what I did. <laughs> All right, Dan, go ahead and take us into the next one, buddy. And uh, from here on out, uh, this is now the second week we're going to say this. And it's Sandy Robinson's favorite category, <laughs> category of tennis. Uh, your question is thus. Another color question here. What color do all male and female competitors have to wear while competing in Wimbledon? Now, Did whenever you? I first got into tennis, I wondered why for the longest time. But it, it's common sense when you think about it and look at the history. Oh, yeah. Four, three, two, one. Bends down. Let's go to Lucas first. White. That is correct for one point. And Michael. Of course, the Boston guy is subliminally cheating while wearing a white shirt. <laughs> just, seriously, Boston is it. known for that, Michael. Are you surprised? Uh, not for we're not known for tennis. <laughs> no, but cheating galore for sports. Um. Anyways, your 
Final question is like round one. Fan. So, yeah. <laughs> Before Dan kills me for calling Boston cheaters. All right. Leono Messi is from which country in soccer? Lionel. Lionel. Lionel Messi. Thank you for asking uh, the question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Europeans can have their nice little uh, kick around the ball, their kick ball. We'll take football, right, Dan? <laughs> yeah, we'll take football. <laughs> we'll go five, we four, because we can't three, play soccer. To be fair, two, one. Sadly, no. We are horrid <laughs> excuses in the World Cup every year. But pens down. Let's go to Michael first. I think I might have fucked this up. I'm just in Madrid. That is incorrect, unfortunately. And Lucas. Argentina, baby. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, Madrid is a city, Michael. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all right. It, trust me, with soccer, I would have been like uh, E equals MC squared. I don't fucking know. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of round one. Um, Lucas has got a one-point lead, four to three. So we got a pretty tight game going into round two. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very close, like you see with – a lot of these, and you know, it's it, it really could just go either way into round two and three, but we'll find out here in a second because round two works as such. Round two is very simple. It is our lovely wheel round. Each person will have a chance to spin the wheel. If they don't like what they first land on, they may spin again. Each uh, category has four questions worth two points apiece. You can opt down to multiple choice to make it worth one point. And there also is stealing in this round. So if you miss it, your opponent can pounce on it and take that point away or two points if you just go with that route. But with that, Lucas, you are ahead. So you have first chance at the wheel, which I have brought up. And our categories tonight, soccer, UFC, NHL, NBA, NFL, auto racing, tennis, MLB, opponents and a player's choice, and of course our cheap sponsor, Boost Mobile. So Lucas, you can choose. Would you like to spin first or defer? I would like to defer, like a patriot, like a true patriot. All right, Michael, you are up. You have no one to defer to. You must take this. Maybe auto racing, which you uh, take uh, it yeah, or yeah, throw it back. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a spin again. <laughs> spin again. All right. In the world of tennis, uh, that's gonna be a spin again. That's gonna be. A spin. <laughs> uh, you, you are stuck with that, sir. That is no, a second. That's a that's a spin again. That's a spin again. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Robinson would not be uh, happy with your choice of uh, trying to spin out of it after you already use your spin again. <laughs> Michael, oh, right. those fingers ready. Michael, Michael. Uh, in your category of tennis, which you cannot spin out of, <laughs> here you go. Question number one. Roger Federer has how many Wimbledon titles. Now, you know, we, right now we got the U.S. Open going on. Um, U.S. Open's played on, uh, you know, concrete or cement or whatever. But Wimbledon, we know, is played on grass. So this is a different country than uh, the U.S. Open. Yes. So, yes, the, the U.S. is hard courts as Wimbledon is the classic grass. So you're down to five, four, three. Seven. That is incorrect. Lucas, you have a chance to steal for two points. This is going to be fun, gentlemen. I love guessing randomly. At, uh, yeah. guessing on nothing about. I'm going to guess eight. Wow. And he gets the two-point steal, folks. Wow, he nailed it. Eight. Yeah, I thought you would have went the other way, six, ten. No, I knew he had like eight or nine. Because he's really, really good yeah. there. He dominates there. He's dominated there for years. All right. And in, in a similar vein as that question, your next question is, Andre Agassi 
has won how many U.S. Open titles? Another led. This is a legendary uh, tennis player from the '80s. This is my favorite tennis player growing up as a kid. Uh, there was well, a lot of greats when I was well, growing. Up. Yeah, I mean, for U.S. players, this was one of the one of the greatest. Other other than the disappointment of Andy Roderick, but you know, we won't speak of that. Yeah, he didn't turn out to be as great as everybody thought he was. Was this the last good U.S. US tennis player? Um, Pretty much. Five. Uh, we'll go five. What was your answer? Five. That is incorrect. Lucas, another okay. chance to steal. That's... I'm going to do the same strategy. <laughs> I'm going to go six. That is incorrect as well. Yeah. He only had two. He only oh, won two. All right. We went two U.S. Open. I, I, I thought you guys were talking him up as the greatest player ever, and it made me think he won 10. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, my God. Um, no, I, I know who. I'm not that adept. Deaf yeah. tennis. You do have multiple choice. I do want to remind you. Yeah, you yeah. do have multiple choice. Um, okay, your next question, Michael, is Jimmy Connors was the winner of how many Grand Slams? This is combined. No one said I had to do math when I did <laughs> sports. Yeah, yeah. This is combined. This is this is U.S. Open, Wimbledon, French Open, and Australian Open. Combined, all the ones that he won. Four. Boy, Sandy Robinson would be salivating at these questions. Wow. I'm gonna say he sounds white, Jimmy Connors. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say six. Uh, Lucas, you have a chance to steal. I think it was a lot. I'm going to go like 17. Uh, that is also incorrect. The correct answer was 12. You won 12 Grand Slams. Uh, yes, 12 good, in his good. career. You were, you were on the right track that time, uh, Lucas. I, I see Michael's strategy, and it's it, it's, hey, it's, it's it's working good. mostly for him. It really is. Yeah. He had won one Australian, four French, two Wimbledon, and five U.S. Opens. Yep. You add that up, that'll be 12. All right, your last question, Michael, Five. in the category of tennis. Uh, good luck with this one. What year did the Battle of the Sexes featuring Billie Jean King taking on Bobby Riggs take place? Now, 1972? Obviously oh! Oh, close. Lucas, you have a chance to steal. I believe it's 1974. Oh, so close. 1973, gentlemen. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Dan, would you like to give us uh, the rundown after after that while I bring up the wheel real quick? Sure. Uh, so Lucas got a two-point steal, and Michael didn't get any – Thing right, so Lucas went up from four to three to six to three. So now Lucas is. I was going to say, like, I was playing it up. I do know tennis. I was just playing it up. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I don't know the fucking numbers, but I know all the players. And all right, Lucas, the spin is yours. You have no one to do refer it. to. Spin it. Tennis is off the table. MLB. Major League Baseball, Lucas. I will take Major League Baseball. All right. I will be proctoring your questions for Major League Baseball. Lucas, your first question. Barry Bonds broke Hank Aaron's home run record. How many home runs did he hit in his career? Hank Aaron? Oh. Barry Bonds. Oh. Uh, multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, 714, B, 752, C, 760, or D, 762. And that's a lot when you juice up and now have no balls. <laughs> uh, can, can, we, can we challenge this and say zero, technically? <laughs> we hit some of those before you use steroids. There are home runs to hit when we weighed 180 pounds. Um, can I say 762? 
That is correct for one point. All right, Lucas, your second question in Major League Baseball. Wade Boggs won seven batting titles with the Boston Red Sox. Which team did he win his first World Series with? I know this because it hurts me. It's the New York Yankees, and you rode around on a police horse. That is correct for two points because the Yankees are better. Your third question. Fried chicken himself. Roger Clemens set a strikeout record for the Boston Red Sox in 1986. How many men did he strike out versus the Seattle Mar or Mariners? 20? That, <sighs> Jesus, that is correct. And your final question to wrap up your question. When do the Red Sox play? <laughs> <laughs> How many World Series championships have the New York Yankees won? 27? Jesus Christ. That is correct again. Coming out of that score with that after round two. Coming out 13 to three. In is favor of Lucas, which it's not over because it has to be more than 10 points for a knockout. We still okay, go. So he basically has to hit or lose. If you would calm down, let me explain. <laughs> go ahead. <sighs> no wonder I fucking drink Dan. No fucking wonder. You know, this is why I drink Dan. This is why I fucking drink Dan. My father used to. <laughs> Anyways. With the score 13 to 3, we still go into round number three, which works as such. Each competitor will pick three options between one and eight. Those correspond with sporting categories. Your first pick will be worth two points. Second pick, three points. Last pick, five points. So, with that said, it is 13 to 3. Lucas, you are ahead. Give us your numbers first. Uh, one, four, and seven. One, four, and seven. And Michael, your three uh, numbers, please, sir. Two, three, eight. All right. I will proctor yours, Michael, for you. And remind you, you must hit them all to throw it back to Lucas. All right. Category number two of tennis. Of tennis. Rafael Nadal hails from which country? That's Spain? That is correct for two points, and we are still going here, folks. Tied? Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that time Spain came in handy. All right. Your next option, number three you chose, which is the category of the NFL. Your three-point question. Who did New England win their first Super Bowl title against? I have a feeling Lucas knows this one. Oh, I know I this. It wasn't the Bears, where they got destroyed. Was it the Packers? Uh, uh, You're doing a good job narrowing it down. I'll, I'll, go, <laughs> oh, I'll go St. Louis Rams. I'll go St. Louis Rams, yeah. Lock and he up. hits that for three points. <laughs> he is not fucking around here, folks. He is not fucking around. <laughs> I think he wow, is fucking around. <laughs> a hell of a comeback so far. Let's see if you can compete the comeback. All right, Michael, your last question in category number eight, Major League Baseball. And your question for five points and to throw it back to Lucas to avoid the TKO. Don Baylor played in the World Series three consecutive years with three different teams in the 80s. Name those three teams. Boy, oh boy. I don't I don't even know if Lucas would know this one. I think I have this actually. Do you? The, a lot of these questions just happen to be in your wheelhouse, huh, Lucas? I love me some baseball. This is a tough okay. one, Michael. Uh, it is a tough say, one. Uh, Does it have to be in, in order or anything? Or just No, it doesn't have to be in order. Yeah. As long as you get the yeah. three teams. Okay, I'll say Red Sox. Uh, no. Red Sox. Yankee. Uh, what are they? Yankees and Giants. 
Oh, man. Unfortunately. And your winner by technical knockout, Lucas Schilbach. The correct answer was the Mid or the Boston Red Sox, Minnesota Twins, and Oakland A's. Yeah. Damn. He, that he, was one hell of a game, I'll tell you. Yeah, I just, I just think uh, the the second round really did Michael Campbell in. Um, in the base, I mean, he did a hell of a job in the third round, getting two out of three. That third one, it, it's kind of a deep cut, but five pointers are going to be deep cuts. They're not going to be questions that everybody and their brothers are going to know right off the bat. So, uh, yeah, it was Michael. Uh, you know, we know you you kind of struggled in that second round. Which put you, put you well, I, I would say this, Dan, at, at the point of I understood the strategy, thinking maybe maybe Lucas doesn't know tennis, which you know, he he had a bad a bad round two with this one, his next one that might turn around for him because round three, you know, he was going to Ben Bateman school of uh psych out which <laughs> I'd work on the audition. Uh, audition tape there, kid. But uh, I mean, you did better acting than better than Ben Bateman. But you could you could still tell like he was done playing around. He's like, okay, time to get this back up. But MLB, especially with something like that, it it does it does cut deep. But I think enough of this. Let's go to our post match interviews for our competitors starting now. Start with our winner, Lucas Schilbach. Lucas. You came into this not sure how you would do. You got baseball as a strength there in round two. How are you feeling after this win? I mean, I feel great. It was a it's a match that things went my way. I got questions I knew, and uh, I hit them. So I can never be unhappy about that. Well, now with this win, I can say with you moving on now, your next opponent is now Cody Newberry, who's also a big – baseball fan yeah how does how do you think you'll size up uh with cody going into this i mean honestly I, it's like another thing i really don't know i there's not a lot of them there's not a lot of places for me to look to find out the knowledge base of competitors in this league i know he knows baseball he seems knowledgeable about football beyond that i really don't know uh, i still think i probably have ufc as over as a strength over him but i can still take advantage yeah and i mean with this moving on you have that you have that win to keep uh, defending, to build up as many wins as he can to get to the end of the season. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how well you two pair, up, pair off against each other. Yeah. Both of you big baseball guys, but I think he has, uh, as you have with UFC, I think he has some good NBA knowledge that could really help him. But, yeah, time will tell, Lucas. But, Lucas, again, congratulations. Uh you know, it was great seeing you in this one. Glad you got the victory. And now with our unfortunate loser, Michael Campbell. Michael, what happened in round two? Was it was it just sticking to the plan of just trying to see if he can not get the get the questions from the two point basis, or or what was it? What happened? Yeah. Well, it was pretty much just since it's going to be a number. Like, it is risky to just guess a number because then he can just guess a number. But it was like, instead of just giving him, because there was that Jimmy Connors one, it was maybe 12, 12 was an option, and he just says B, guess the question. So I'm going to make him know the answer and guess it. If he guesses it, well, then, you know, fuck me, right? I mean, good on him. But, yeah. you know, it was just a, and if I guess a number, I get it right, great. But <laughs> early, early, backfired once, and I'm not too worried about it. It's just when when you got baseball, he just kept getting like two pointers, two pointers, two pointers. That's that just ballooned the lead like way too far. And I was hoping for NBA for the five pointer that was gonna save me, but MLB. Whatever, you know. <laughs> but I mean I'm, I'm okay. I mean when round three started though, you came out swinging just like get that out of here. Get that out of here. I mean <laughs> I really thought you were just like fucking around with him and we're just going for the kill at that point. But I mean, uh, I mean, like I said, I am actually a Patriots fan, so I'm just doing that. So I know Patriots history like pretty well, and that's why obviously they got destroyed by the Bears, by the Packers, blah blah blah. And 
yeah. Yeah, so I'm just fucking around having fun because I know the Patriots and I knew that one literally straight away. <laughs> well, I mean, as, as I said, uh, with the winner of this moving on, you will move on as well because this season is far from over and your next opponent is Matthew Rosa, one half of the loudmouth Afro Samurai that only scores three points in a match, much like their uh, – Team Monarch of Nico scoring three points against Jim Green to win a fandom match, which is pretty sad. But how do, how do you feel you'll shape up uh, against uh, probably the better half of Afro Samurai, I would say? Yeah, I actually I actually didn't know he was in this league, to be honest, because I just haven't seen him talk about sports. Like, I know he's good at music and everything. But, yeah, that would be interesting because, obviously, he's quite young. So I'm interested to see what his knowledge is. And maybe he has a unique strength like Lucas with UFC. I'll, I'll, well, I I'll know he's a good, he's a good soccer fan. So uh, that, that could be maybe something to avoid. study on. <laughs> but I hope he avoids uh, we'll it. Do, we'll do, we'll do. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was great having you, Michael. Like, I know you're yeah. usually a movie guy. We've seen you with the movie matches. I mean, you have one half of the tag team champions. So it so is again, interesting. Sorry, Oh, I said <laughs> it's uh, it, it it is interesting to see you with sports. I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Glad you came. And I know we'll see you back. But with that, let's throw it back to our hosts. That was Lucas and Michael. So let's throw it back to Dan and myself. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, I, that second round of baseball really showed uh, Lucas. Lucas strength. He, he just was no pun intended hammering those questions out of the ballpark. Uh, each one of them were right in his, when you're talking about the Red Sox or the Yankees, that was right up his wheelhouse. And, 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 and Michael just couldn't, uh, couldn't recover from, from that. I mean, he did a hell of a job getting two of those um, two pointers and three pointers to, to even yeah. be close. Well, I, I think too, with, I, I think if, with the with the tennis ones with the numbers, I can I can kind of understand that where you guess a number, you just try to make your opponent guess a number too. So it's kind of just trying to throw that guess off to them. I mean, it kind of backfired in this one, but you know, like I said, the season is far from over. Both these guys will have more games coming up, so it could easily turn around, and you know, Michael could easily just run on a tear in this. I mean, his next opponent, Matthew Rosa. Of course, uh, we both know from last week, Matthew Rosa lost against uh, Cody, and Cody now going up against Lucas. So that that would be – both of these are going to be interesting matchups moving on in the future. But I think with that, we will get it all wrapped up here because one of our own has to go do full metal trivia. Dan Skip Allen. He has to go do full metal trivia, so we'll wrap this up so he can get his ass kicked. All right, let's start with our winner, Lucas Schilbach. Where can the good kids find you, buddy? Uh, you'll see me on the Facebook group under my name, Lucas Schilbach. You can follow me on Twitter under the same name. Uh, I occasionally tweet about sports, uh, so maybe there'll be some Red Sox related stuff in there. But beyond that, uh, you'll just see me around. Can't wait to come back the next time. All right, and you can also find his political post where I'd like to go up in a room, fight it out to see who comes out alive. I'm going with Lucas. But, Michael, where can the good kids find you, Mike? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Letterbox at Michael Campbell. I did a, did a hack. My name wasn't available, so for the two L's in my last name, I did lowercase I's. That's, that's a smart thing about it. Uh, and other than that, you can see me around. Just thanks for having me. Yeah. All right, and I just kid with Dan. Dan, go tear it up. Go give him a new one, whatever whatever you people say about giving him one for. Dan Skip Allen, where can they find you? You can always find me at uh, Dan Skip Allen on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest, or at from the fourth row at WordPress.com where I do movie reviews and movie articles, or a um, web suit, uh, site that I write for called CineSportsTalk.com. That's C-I-N. S P O R T T A L K dot com, Cinesports Talk dot com. And every week, right here with Tim, talking about sports in the sports battlefield. 
That is right. And, of course, I am T.M. Smith, the commissioner, head honcho, whatever you want to say, with Multiplex Entertainment. You can find us here every Wednesday with Sports Battlefield. Uh, a lot of time I help out with movies on Movie Mondays with Jake and Jess. Sometimes I'll help uh, Caleb out with Phantom Fridays. And, of course, TV Tuesdays, which great TV matches we have coming up. The Phantom matches I've used. As you have seen, I've started to come in, great fandom play-ins to get to the fandom TV tournament, and of course, getting ready for the matchup, which you've probably already seen it by now, which is Jim Green going up against Zadius. So with that, the winner moves on against Harley Bork for the vacated TV title because Chance has to go carry KO to a championship. So with that, from all of us here at Sports Battlefield tonight, that is Lucas. Our winner, Michael, Dan, myself, good night, God bless, we'll see you next time.